So back in April of this year, we released our very first video featuring our ultimate Mac setup. In that video, we mentioned that one day we will up the ante and become a tech review channel dedicated in delivering video content in 4K. We did call out Sony Philippines to send out their good graces, but unfortunately, it fell on deaf ears. This didn't deter us. After months and months of the cup noodle diet, we were able to purchase our very own Sony A6300 mirrorless camera with a 16-15mm kit lens. And since we were frugal enough, we decided to get a prime lens, the Sony 35mm f-stop 1.8. More about the lens selection later in the video. Sony Philippines may have not noticed our dire wishes, but guess what? The camera gods sent us a blessing. Our friends at Ziyun Philippines were gracious enough and crazy enough to be Think Tank TV PH's very first sponsor. Ziyun PH sent their newest flagship electronic stabilizer, the Ziyun Tech Crane V2 3-axis gimbal. This is Barry, your anonymous yet awesome host, and in this video, we are going to explain to you why the Sony A6300 and the Xeon Tech Crane V2 combo could unarguably be the ultimate 4K video capturing combo for the Filipino prosumer market after we roll out the intro. Before we begin, I'd like to make it clear to you guys just because we are treading sponsored waters, Think Tank TV PH still has full editorial freedom. Our friends at Ziyun Philippines wouldn't like it any other way. I guess that's how confident they are with their products. To start it all off, let's focus in on the mirrorless camera, the Sony A6300. We won't talk about all of its features since there are already countless reviews for the said camera, but we will zero in on the reasons why we decided on getting the A6300 over its younger brother, the Sony 6500, or its closest competitor, the Panasonic GH4. We won't be comparing it to the Panasonic GH5 since it's double the price of a 6300. This brings us to talking about the first reason why we opted the A6300, which is the cost. As newbies in the 4K realm, we wanted to gradually grow our tech with budget-friendly future-proofing as our main priority. Among all the 4K mirrorless cameras in the market at the time of recording, the Sony A6300 is the most affordable with the best performance to price ratio. Side note. We were on the fence between the Alpha 6300, which is roughly 20,000 pesos cheaper than its younger counterpart, the Alpha 6500. That was enough allowance to get us an additional lens, which was quite bokehlicious, the Sony SEL 35 f one a Bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. I can't get enough of that yummy, out-of-focus, bubbly blur. Oh, you cheeky cheeky. Oh, you cheeky bokeh! I'm the only whore in this place. Anyway, to state that the A6300 having the best performance to price is quite subjective, we are aware there are other 4K mirrorless cameras like the Panasonic GH4 and G7 who are cheaper in price. There are also <laughs> countless smartphones already got on board 4K cameras out of the box for way cheaper. Think Tank TV PH's opinion on making this camera having the best performance is based on several key features. This brings us to the next reason why we bought this camera, which is its uncanny capability in low light settings. Since we primarily shoot indoors and usually at night, low light capabilities mean everything to us. Even at 25,600 ISO, the video is still very usable with not much grainy noise. Let me show you what I mean. Third on the list why we consider the A6300 above the rest in its price range is the size of its 24.2 megapixel APS-C Exmor sensor versus Panasonic sensor in both the GH4 and G7 rocking a 16 megapixel micro four thirds. Panasonic fanboys, of course, will argue that a speed booster can easily fix that problem, but it's really not the same as having a bigger sensor. On top of that, the Alpha 6300 sensor actually is 6K downscaled to 4K, 
which results it to have a slightly sharper 4K recording comparing to those from Panasonic. A major plus for the A6300 is that its autofocus is ridiculously awesome with its 425 face detection AF points versus only 49 focus points for the Panasonic GH4. This only applies really though for those mainly utilizing AF equipped lenses. Sounds like the A6300 is a perfect 4K mirrorless camera, huh? Nope, sadly it isn't. It also has its shortcomings. Here are the three main things what we don't fancy about the camera and what we did to overcome its lack of. Number one flaw out of the box, the camera overheats. Its tiny form factor may make it look awesome and lightweight, but is also the main reason why it holds up so much heat. All the more, it doesn't help that 4K recording with its bigger file sizing makes the camera work harder. Now for the newbies out there, what does this mean? If your camera's too hot, it'll stop recording. You're going to need to cool it down. So how to avoid overheating? There are a few things we did so that we can continuously record for hours. First, we upgraded to its most current firmware so that it can lengthen or so that it can ignore the heat buildup with a new option of auto power off temperature set to high. This doesn't solve the actual overheating. Its purpose is so that it won't shut off automatically during long form recordings. So we proceeded with other tricks like buying a small rig cage to help with dissipation of heat. The cage's alloy composition isn't only to make the camera more rigid and protected, but turns out to be a pseudo heat sink. Aside from that, we make sure that the battery lid is kept open so that the heat from the battery releases freely. Lastly, we make sure that the onboard rear screen was stretched out to allow heat not to be concentrated on the body. Problem solved. The number two flaw of the camera just so happens to be its onboard rear screen. We didn't appreciate that it can only tilt up and down. Out of the box, this makes a camera not a viable option for one-man recording team scenarios and also for vloggers. A temporary fix for me when I record on my own is by downloading the smart remote app through the onboard Play Memories camera app store. Attached to my iPhone 6 Plus onto the small rig cage with an articulating arm and a cell phone holder. With this setup, I can frame myself into a proper shot. Problem with this fix is that since we shoot in 4K, the iPhone's Wi-Fi lags as slow as you driving in EDSA traffic. This brings us to wanting a 7-inch 4K field monitor that will attach the camera via HDMI. Please comment below for suggestions as to which budget-friendly monitor we should get. Last but not the least flaw of this camera is its lack of IBIS, also known as in-body image stabilization. We chose the A6300 over the A6500 thinking we didn't need IBIS since we are mainly shooting indoors with not much camera movement. This is where we made an awful mistake since now we are taking in commission work that requires us to shoot outdoors. Yeah, you can attach onboard steady shot lenses onto the camera, but the lack of 3 or 5 axis stabilization really kills the quality of its smoothness. To rectify this oversight, the homies from Xeon PH came to save the day with their very best and latest, the Xeon Crane V2 3 axis gimbal. This gimbal definitely adds a lot of character to my video's composition. Smooth motion of your camera definitely extends your creativity's range. After over a month of using this gimbal, I'm still no expert in getting the best out of it. I still have to practice the multiple techniques in handling the gimbal with specific scenarios. Although, right off the bat, we did notice a dramatic difference between going handheld versus the Alpha 6300 strapped to the Crane V2. Let me give you an example. Here's where I'm trying my best to get a really low profile shot as I encroach through my hallway with the gimbal. Now see this with seamless no jitter camera movement thanks to the Crane V2. Here's more examples of side-by-side -side shots shooting with a gimbal and without. So aside from the obvious buttery smooth shots, what are the other main reasons I consider this part of our ultimate 4K recording setup? Like the A6300, cost is a top priority. Amongst all gimbals that have similar benefits and features in its class to handle mirrorless and mid-sized DSLR cameras, it is the most affordable and battle-tested among other gimbals. We had our eyes in getting a DJI Ronin-M, but with an additional 30,000 peso premium over the Crane V2, the Xeon's flagship was a bargain hard to beat. Second on the list why we opted to get the Crane V2 is because of its upgrades from the first version mainly because of its movable mounting plate for faster adjustability. 
Other upgrades from the previous version count off with a wider joystick and wider spaced out buttons on a more responsive and shorter handle for better interface experience while on the go. The batteries had gotten beefier 26500 batteries rated at 3600 milliamps so that you wouldn't have to replace them midday during a long 8 hour shoot unlike the previous version. The bottom thread is also now removable to be able to accept quarter 20 and 3 8 screws. Lastly, but definitely the main reason why I chose to go with the Xeon Crane V2 is because of its local pre-sales and post-sales customer support. Tim Curry and the rest of his crew at Xeon PH embodies what true customer service is all about. Easy to approach with the right amount of technical know-how too. Now for the shortcomings of this gimbal, yes, there are a few. Firstly, it scratches easily. The black finish of this gimbal is kind of on the thin side. I guess my expectations were raised up when I first felt the gimbal in my hands with its solid all-metal construction. So it was to my surprise that they skipped a beat on the paint finish. I'm pretty careful with our gear, especially with those of higher ticket value, and I've kind of frowned upon seeing paint scratching off from merely tightening the quarter 20 thread onto the base plate or when it easily nicked the body of the gimbal when I accidentally brushed it on a wooden branch. Seeing this nick though, shows that it is really made of alloy and not plastic. To prospective buyers, do expect aesthetic wear and tear especially when taking this outdoors. My next and last qualm on this gimbal is after a long day of shooting and handling this equipment with the A6300, my shoulder blades and back got sore. It could be that I'm out of shape, could also be the fact that I'm just getting older, Aww. or it could also be I just need to get acquainted with the awkward position of holding the setup. I do see in the near future that we will purchase the Xeon Dual Crane for better ergonomics. Despite all these shortcomings, we still recommend the Xeon Crane V2 3-axis gimbal. For those in the Philippines, check this out! The homies from Xeon PH provided us a promo code where you can get a free tripod when you purchase a Crane V2 using the promo code below. Hurry up, because this is only good for the first 5 people who contacts them directly. Their Facebook page link and cell phone number is in the description below. Now for those outside of the Philippines, we have our Amazon affiliate links below for the crane, the A6300, and the other accessories mentioned in the video. I guess this wraps it up for our video tonight. We hope you enjoyed our review on the ultimate 4K video recording setup so much that it's making you itch to go smash that like button. But if you didn't, well hey, go hit that dislike button so we can see how much more room we have to improve. But we'd prefer that you don't because we'd want to get you to subscribe click on the notification settings, write a comment below too, and tell us what video gear did you want us to review next. Until then, this is Barry, your not-so-anonymous but ever-so-awesome host signing off for Think Tank TV PH, where we enjoy taking tech from all over the world and fitting it in a Pinoy budget meal. If you think it, we'll make it.